If you're looking to make money online self-publishing KDP books on Amazon, then I found a very interesting niche for you that's making a decent amount in profits, relatively easy to create, and the competition isn't too high also. So if you are looking to create this type of a business or add to books that you're already publishing, then follow along. Now, if you've not been to this channel before, then welcome. My name's Paul Miles, and I do videos on how to make it, keep it and grow it. And that's your money I'm talking about. And if you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and smash that notification bell to receive notification of when I produce more videos like this. So what is this niche that I found? Well, it's the fashion design sketchbook niche. I suppose it's almost a, a sub niche of the overall sketchbook niche and it's making decent profits. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is basically split it into three broad areas. First of all, the research that I do when I'm looking at a niche and show you how I go about it and just discuss the market, have a look at how much money um, some of the books are making. Then I'm going to show you some resources to enable you to create the interiors and the covers for these books and give you some inspiration. And lastly, I'm gonna look at the all important keywords that are vital for getting traffic to your books. And I've got a gift for you at the end of the video as well, if you last that long. Now, what I normally do when I'm researching a niche is I go over to Google Trends and have a quick look to see if the demand varies throughout the year. And this seems pretty constant. I'm just having a look here at any related search queries. Well, it's just got fashion design sketchbook. Then I had a look at how big the possible market could be. Well, in the US, there's 350 fashion design schools. There's 150 colleges that teach fashion design. And there's approximately 2.2 million people in the US employed in the sort of fashion design um, profession. So there's a potential demand there. Now, after looking at some of these books, there's also a big market for these types of books for kids. So it's a good niche in that it appeals to both adults and kids and those that are doing it recreationally and those that are doing it as part of their profession, part of their job. So let's head over to Amazon and have a look at some of these books. So I've just put in the general search term fashion sketchbook. And what I'm looking for are two main things. One, the number of search results for a niche or a particular keyword and how well the books are selling. So I'm looking at two uh, main bits of data. Now here you can see we've got 1000 results for the keyword fashion sketchbook. And that's important because that's the first thing I'm looking at now. I found from my experience that if a keyword has 1000 searches or less, then it's relatively easy to rank that book on the first page of Amazon, which is where you want to be to get your traffic. Any higher than that, and it can be a bit more difficult unless you're looking at running um, Amazon ads on your books. The next thing I'm looking at is how well the books are selling in a particular niche. And for that, I look at the best sellers ranks, the lower, the better means more books are being sold. And what I'm looking for are three or more books on the first page that have bestsellers ranks of 300,000 or less, because it means they're making sales and it means it's worthwhile, therefore, you know, exploring this niche and, and going ahead and creating some of these types of books. So if we scroll down and have a look at some of the books, well, we've got these two um, books here that are both running ads and they've got bestsellers ranks of less than 300,000. We've got this book here that has a little bestsellers badge and has a bestsellers rank of 17,925. Now, if we hover over, it will tell us whether this book um, is independently published or not. If it says independently published, it means it's published on KDP. So that just gives us a bit more information. So that's selling very well. If we look down here, we've got another one, bestsellers rank of 32,000. But we've got this one here, which is KDP book, bestsellers rank of 240,000. And this one here with a bestsellers rank of 131,000. So that meets the criteria. So books are selling in this niche. Now let's get an idea of how much one of these books is actually making. So if we go to this one that was a bestseller 
and then go across to the book sales calculator at tckpublishing.com. Now this calculator gives us an idea. It's not exact figures. I get people in comments saying, oh, it's incorrect. It's too high, it's too low. It just gives us an idea. Now, I tend to find this calculator actually underreports the number of books that are being sold for um, a particular bestsellers rank. So you could take the figures that I'm about to show you as being a bit higher in reality. But let's take these figures. So we can see here it's selling between 228 to 450 books a month, which if we then go to, over to tangent templates, put in the page count and the list price, we can see it's making approximate royalty of $3.82 per book, which means um, the publisher of this book is making somewhere between $850 to $1,700 per month. Now, again, that's just approximate figures. And from my experience, it's probably going to be a little bit higher than that. But let's just take that as, as a broad guide, which I think you'll agree is pretty good. Now, how easy or how hard are these books to create? Well, if we go back to Amazon and just click on the look inside feature, we can see that all the pages have these outlines of mannequins in various poses that people can draw over and create various uh, clothing designs, fashion designs uh, over those particular um, images. So looks pretty easy to create. Now, there are some uh, books that I've looked at that are aimed more to those that are doing this maybe as a career or studying it in college that have a bit more information on the page. But I'll show you an example of that in a moment. So now what we want is to look at where we can get ideas for the covers, get graphics for the covers and graphics for the interiors. Now, one of my most popular resources that I use and that I'm subscribed to is CreateSpace. They sell interiors, graphics and fonts and have a huge selection but the interiors are one of the biggest pluses of this site. So if we go over to Creative Fabrica and we've got these interiors here, not a huge number, but a starting point. Now, if I click on this one here, we can see that it does come in PDF form, ready to upload, or in vector format, which is the Adobe Illustrator files, which is useful. Now, what I did is went ahead and downloaded this particular file to have a closer look at it. And I've opened it up in Affinity Designer. And we can see this is what a page looks like. And these are the ones that are probably more aimed at the, the, the student and those that are working in this particular profession, because not only does it allow people to, to do the clothing designs, but it also allows fashion designers to put in details here about different colors, patterns, materials. Now, the advantage of having the vector format available is that you can make modifications to the file. Now, this could be important because you can imagine if lots of people go ahead, decide to produce these types of sketchbooks and upload to Amazon and all use the same interior, there could be issues with um, duplicate content penalties because Amazon doesn't like lots of books um, with the same interiors, particularly some types of low content book interiors, but especially things like coloring books and puzzle books. So what I would normally do and what I do do in this situation, and this is the advantage of having the vector format, is that you can open up the files in something like Adobe Illustrator, um, Affinity Designer, Inkscape, uh, Gravit Designer, and make changes to the interior. Now, another common site that I use is Vecteasy.com that have vector images. And I went ahead and put in fashion um, sketchbook and we've got these images here. All of these could be uh, used and manipulated again in something like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer to create images for the interior. But there's also some images here such as this, which would look good on the, on the cover of a book. So you've got images there to create attractive covers which is important if you're going to get conversions and make sales. Another site is fiverr.com. And again, I put in fashion sketchbook. Now there are people here that are selling interiors, but to be honest, I think a lot of these are actually um, being sold probably by the same designer on uh, uh, Creative Fabrica, which is good. Um, this person's creating a design and selling it on multiple platforms. And this looked interesting. And this is someone who will draw original um, fashion design images, which would be great to use again in black and white form inside your sketchbook or on the cover. So 
you'd have something completely original. So now we come on to the all important keywords. And why are keywords important? Well, these are the things that customers type into the search bar on Amazon. And when they do that and click enter, products will appear. So what you want to happen is your books to appear when someone puts in that particular keyword. Now, different keywords will have um, different search results, so different amounts of competition. And also, when I do a search for a keyword, as we can see here, we've got this information in the top left-hand corner, which gives us an idea of the Google search numbers per month for a particular keyword. And this is from a plugin that I've got installed called Keywords Everywhere. Now, it does cost $10 for 100,000 credits, but it does give that information, which is not vital, but can be useful if you're trying to decide between a couple of different keywords. Because if a particular keyword does have a lot of searches on Google per month, then that just gives that keyword a bit of extra strength. So what I normally do is I would type in a keyword like this, fashion sketchbook, and you will notice that all these suggestions come up from Amazon. Now these are important because Amazon is basically telling us what customers are searching for. And also, when customers do their searches, these suggestions will pop up and customers will tend to suggest, uh, will tend to click on these particular keywords. So it's a, a double bonus, if you like. Amazon's telling us what people are searching for and these are keywords that people will click on. So what I normally do is open up a blank spreadsheet and start to make a list of these keywords. And I'll take each one of those keywords in the suggestion box, put that into the search bar, look at the number of search results for that particular keyword. And I'll also look to see if there are any uh, Google searches per month for that particular keyword. And I'll build up uh, a whole list on, um, on the spreadsheet. And as you put in these keywords, more will start to appear. And you can end up with quite a large list of keywords, but very useful keywords with the number of uh, Amazon search results. So giving you an idea um, of the competition. And particularly if you're starting out or not intending on running Amazon ads, it's often beneficial just to go for those keywords with lower search results, just to give your book a better chance of appearing in the Amazon search results. Now I've also got another plugin installed called AMZ Suggestion Expander, which also will give these um, extra keywords here on the right hand side. And sometimes you can get quite a lot of these keywords. And again, these are the keywords that have been searched for on Amazon. So those can also go into the spreadsheet. Now, as you can imagine, this can take some time. And for, for big niches, it can take you know quite a number of hours, three, four, five hours to build your keywords, then take each one and put it into the Amazon search bar. Now I've done this already for this particular niche and I've got all these keywords here and I found 40 relevant keywords with quite a few in there with low numbers of search results. Now what I did find in this list was that there were some keywords with really high numbers of search results and I think the reason for that is is because let's take for an example a fashion sketchbook for designers which has got 10,000 search results if you then go through the, the actual search results themselves, go through to page two, three, four, etc., you find that a lot of the results aren't actually uh, fashion related, but it brings up a lot of the, the books from the general sketchbook niche. So although some of these keywords are quite high, I would probably tend to maybe target these as your you know, secondary keywords, those keywords that you put in the subtitle. I'd still go for a, a main keyword, the title of your book as a, a low search result keyword, but maybe put one of these or two of these um, higher competition keywords in the subtitles of your books. Then what you can do is when you look through this list, um, you can take words from some of these other keywords. So you could have like girls, kids, teens, men, stencils, adults, beginners, designers, and put those into your seven keyword boxes. So then you're covering more bases with that. But as you can see here, I've done all the work for you. And what I've done is uploaded this list of keywords in .csv, uh, .pdf, and uh, Excel format onto my Gumroad shop, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. 
and these keywords are absolutely free. They're free to, to download. So go ahead uh, and, and get them from there, which will give you a kickstart in producing your own books. Now, using keywords to sell books is very important. And it's very important that you know where to place these keywords. And if you want to learn how I do it, then watch this video next where I show you my complete process. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you very much for your time. It's very much appreciated. And until next time, goodbye.